Hi everyone, so in this episode we're gonna talk about some of the tools which are useful to find like you no know, novelists in the dependencies or JavaScript that the application is using. So as a pen tester, uh, like you know, one of the items you must check uh, as part of the OS top 10 checklist or ASVS or, or any checklist pretty much that you follow the application that you're testing uh, does not have any dependencies or, or libraries which are vulnerable. And if those are, maybe you can go a step further and then you can actually try those CVE, CVSS or CVEs uh, to exploit those that application as well. Uh, so in this episode, uh, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, as, an, as an app owner, this might also be useful because some, one of the tools that we're going to talk about is very simple enough. You can, you can run it in your browser and it, it passively scans for the vulnerabilities in your application and, and it's going to let you know. So hopefully you like it. Uh, please hit the like button if you do and subscribe to my channel for the weekly episodes. Uh, let's get into it. So uh, JavaScript is like, you know, very common among all the applications, especially if you're using like a Node.js and, and uh, jQuery, uh, I'm sure like you must have seen that it's quite common in all the applications which are being developed nowadays. So uh, there are two tools we're gonna discuss today. One is the OWASP dependency check, uh, which of course we all know, uh, like you know, developed by the OWASP and it's an open source tool. The other one is the retire.js, uh, which is again, uh, an open source tool, uh, which is available in various ways. So we're gonna uh, check that out in just about a minute. So the dependency check is the software component analysis tool that attempts to detect publicly disclosed vulnerabilities, which are essentially a CVE. Uh, are contained within the project's dependencies. So uh, one one caveat you have is you need to have like your jar file or something uh, with you. So for example, when you're doing the pen test, maybe that's not always the case. You, if you are doing the black box, you might not have the source code access. So this then this becomes a bit of an unrelevant. But if you do like uh, as an app owner or white box testing, yeah, you should definitely do this. Uh, it does this by determining if there is a common platform enumeration identifier for a given dependency. If, if found, it will generate a report linking to the associated CVE entries, documentation and links to binary. So if you like, you know, if you look it up any, any CVE vulnerabilities, for example, let's see. So this is uh, one of the CVE from 2020. Um, of course, we don't need to get into the detail of what this CVE is about. But usually what uh, this tool does is it's going to find the CPE uh, and like, you know, uh, based on the version information, it, it finds whether there is any CVE attached to it. And if it does, then it will include in the report. Of course, it will also provide you with all the links uh, so you can easily find out uh, uh, what is the vulnerability and how do you fix it. Uh, you can obviously also plug it, plug it in with your Jenkins, Maven, and, and they have like you know, uh, pretty pretty good directions on how to use it. So even if you have to run it on your local system, it's very easy to run it. It's uh, it's not only you can run it on Jenkins or Maven, but you can also use it on the individual system. So do check this out. Uh, let me know if you have any questions running this. But yeah, this one is easy to run. The second one we're gonna talk about uh, retire.js is. Uh, especially for scanning the JavaScript libraries uh, for the use, right? Uh, this is greatly simplifies the development, but we need to stay up to date to the security fixes because these frameworks are very easy to use. So one can set up the website in, in one day. But yeah, dependencies are the critical thing. So uh, good thing is you can use it as a command line scanner, just like how you do it for the dependency check. Uh, you need to have, maybe you can install as a, as a root on your system and then uh, it will scan the entire code. You can also have different plugins you can use. Uh, good thing is it also available as a Chrome and Firefox extension. As you can see here, I have it enabled. And then it's also available as a burp and the OWASP app. So uh, pretty much like, you know, how this is this is going to work on the Chrome side. So if you, let's say, visit any website which is vulnerable or has any JavaScript which is vulnerable, you will see this little icon here. And if you click on it, it will give you uh, the definition. So uh, like, you know, this is the jQuery. It found the 3.1. Uh, uh, mostly they find this from either the file name or the content of the file. Or like, you know, they, in the content itself, it will mention what's the version of the uh, 
or js so that's way it, that way it will find it and then it will tell you what is the cve uh, and what is the severity so you can appropriately check it and also report in your uh, also report it so uh, like you know the app owner can take the appropriate action so that's the one way to find it and and suppose you are using zap you can also install it uh, for uh, in this example I'm, I'm using burp so what you can do is if you have uh, i think if you have the burp pro uh, you can just go to the extender and go to the bapb store uh, and then download the extension here now you can see the rating is pretty good so uh, this does give a good result uh, while you are using the burp and it was uh, recently updated uh, one thing i have though noticed is uh, if you see here uh, probably here yeah so burp itself also has a similar check which says uh, burp uh, oh, sorry vulnerable javascript dependencies and it does the same thing so it it finds uh, common javascript libraries uh, and then like you know it will find the scan it and find any vulnerabilities uh, based on the content or the the file type and it will also report so uh, if you have to look the vulnerabilities uh, this is where you can find it so for, for example this one uh, this will say a vulnerable version of the jquery found and here it will note this issue was generated by the extension so this is not the actual uh, like you know reported by the burb itself uh, now if you go back here and if you want to see uh, the request like how did it find so he made a request to this host with this particular file name and that is what it got right so that's how he found it now here in the blue ones are the ones which was which were found by the burp rule not the extension so it pretty much found the same thing but however sometimes like you know burp extension burp itself might not be up to date uh, but this extension uh, have like you know may provide uh, surety so uh, i would i would recommend either using like you know your browser extension or maybe have it in the burp uh, so just to make sure you don't miss out on any of the javascript which burp may may not be able to catch or maybe uh, sometimes like you know this extension is not able to catch uh, so both of these extensions uh, would work. You can also have it on the Firefox as well, as I said. Uh, so yeah, this one uh, is a is a quick episode. I wanna uh, show you, uh, uh, like you know, how you can how you can comply or how you can test the OS top 10 uh, using component uh, with uh, vulnerable versions. I've actually done like detailed video on what that A9 section is about and, and what is the risk and how do you pen test and everything in the previous video, uh, which is also linked here. Uh, so do check that out if you haven't already. Uh, but yeah, that's it for now for this week. If you have any other questions, uh, please reach out to me and uh, hopefully I can be able to answer uh, and then if you have any any suggestions please drop me in the comment as well uh, and again please please hit the subscribe button and the like button if you haven't already thank you guys i'll see you all next week bye